and Roddy Piper, being the man that he is, pulled his belt down and started lashing Tommy Rich. You know, mm. it was the most uh, uh, disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, and I know Tommy Rich, and I talked to him on the telephone, and he told me he just can't wait to get in that strap match with Roddy Piper. In the middle of the spring of 1982, Jack Briscoe was still trying to piss off Piper and use Piper's ego to get a shot at Piper's Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Championship. Piper would get very personal with Jack. Okay, no Mr. Trouble. Briscoe, Mr. Briscoe, I just wanted, I wanted you to know something, you know, I was going through the airport in Pittsburgh and I saw these see all these nice little Indian things and I thought well I, I was doing something to you maybe to offend you and that you didn't like me and I heard you come out here talking and, and I thought that I would buy you a little present here Mr. Briscoe but just a second now I'm quite serious here I was trying to but then I realized that I wear a kilt and I'm proud of being a Scotsman and you never mentioned being you know this little something you make on your off time and, and you never mentioned nothing about being an Indian and you don't know, wear feathers and, and and maybe I know you're not a chief or not good enough to be a chief don't get me wrong now but what I'm saying is Maybe you're ashamed of what you are, where I stand out here like a man in my guilt, and I didn't want to think that I would really offend you by giving you this wonderful little present, but if you're ashamed of what you are, Mr. Briscoe, I would uh, take it back. Well, uh, I would think that you were the man that's ashamed of what you are, because you ought to put your title on the line in the ring. Besides what you did to Tommy Rich, that belt lashing you gave him, he's going to give you one. Do something. Yeah, you see, there he goes, he walks off, yeah. There he goes walking off, you see? Real easy to be a hero. I come out like a nice guy. Real easy, he comes down here, talks all kinds of big stuff, right? So Roddy Piper being the man that he is, he comes down, I'll tell you what, you want a title match? I will give you a title match. Roddy Piper would get ready for Jack Briscoe with a squash match. Piper like a bird going in. Getting out here and saying what he did to Jack Crystal, I think he's got himself in a lot of trouble. All right, Piper, Larson comes off with a sleeper. Referee Sonny Fargo says ring the bell. But with the title on the line, Jack Briscoe defeated Piper for the championship. You know, when I first came into this area, I told the folks of the Mid-Atlantic area that I come here for competition and I come here to win belts. And uh, the Mid-Atlantic championship belt was the most prestigious belt here and this is the one I went after and I was forced enough to defeat Roddy Piper for it and I'm proud to be the man I'll tell you something, I'll just let me just tell you something. I'll tell you, I come here like a man. No, I'll tell you, no, no, none of that stuff. I'll tell you, this is for you, Mr. Briscoe, because I'll tell you something, mister. You're nothing but a trash can Indian and a garbage can. Don't you get me? You're nothing but a trash can Indian and a garbage can champion, mister. You think that you could beat me? You think that you could do anything for me? You, you cheap shot at your way through that. You're garbage. You're nothing but an idiot, mister. A fan gave me this, a fan gave me this, and I was going to give it to him and sell him, but it's below my dignity, but since you're acting the way you are, sucker, that's what you Tim Horner would make the mistake of trying to reprimand Piper. Tim was there. Tim, you saw this, man. If anybody ever needed their can kicked, it was you. And I'm one man. I'm glad it happened. If anybody ever needed my can kick, it's me. What? Koloff helps Piper beat down Horner. He's going wild up there in the ring. Roddy Piper, Tim Horner, Ivan Koloff. All of them are, both of them are all over Tim. Koloff's got him behind Piper now. He's going to throw him. David Crockett tries to break it up and he even gets shoved down. David into the ring. He's trying. He gets shoved down. Tom Morocco is in. Jack Briscoe eventually helped make the save. Jack Briscoe, Jack, the guy just went wild. Man, Roddy Piper is going first. He went wild. Piper is more heated than ever, calling Jack Briscoe a trash can champion. Always the cool man. Always the cool man. You can sit there and shut your mouth for a change, because I'm sick and tired of all of it. That's where he belongs, right there, in a stinking trash can. You see, mister, you say you beat me with the figure four. Well, let me tell you something, man. I've done some studying. I know the counter to the figure four, Mr. Jack Briscoe. You're nothing but a cheap shot artist. You're nothing but a garbage can Indian, a garbage can champion. You think you can beat me, mister? I'll butt my cigar. 
cigar in your face just for kicks, Jack Briscoe. I'll stand here and say what I want to do to you. I'll say what I want to do to you. Say anything, get your hands away from me. Say anything I want to, mister, because you'll find something else. Just shut up. Right. You shut up when I'm talking. You shut up when I mean it. I'll tell you something, mister. You don't throw rocks at a guy who's got a machine gun, Briscoe. You step in my way, and I'm going to kill you. In a match between Jerry Briscoe and Tony Russo, Piper would take his ire out on Jack's brother Jerry, injuring Jerry at the end of the match. Ringside Roddy Piper, Roddy Piper, very sneaky, very dirty trick you pulled on Jerry Briscoe. Well, that's about three times I've heard you say, very sneaky, very dirty trick I pulled on Jerry Briscoe. <laughs> you see, the thing is, there's all kinds of people that come up here and talk and talk and say, well, I hurt this guy in Chicago, I hurt this guy in Minneapolis, I hurt this guy in, in, in Iowa, I hurt this guy in Biafra. But you see, when Roddy Piper wants to do something, he does it right here on television, national television, mid-Atlantic goes all over the place just to see. You see, that's why wrestlers fear Roddy Piper. That's why Jack Briscoe's knees tremble when he hears the word Roddy Piper. And all of a sudden, Jack Briscoe's down there, and he's holding on to his little brother, and his little brother's leg is all mango thing. And you know what? There were these humongous tears crying out of Jack Briscoe's eyes. There's Jerry Briscoe. He's crying. There's Tony Russo. He's crying. And so what I'm trying to say is the only guy that's got any substance the whole batch of us is me. You see, because I don't have to fear nobody. I'm starting to take them on two at a time. I'm hurting people all over the place. And you know why I'm hurting people? Because I'm sick and tired of people picking on me. People backstabbing me. If you see me come out there, I look like Superman. I was flying. And you see, that's why I sound like thunder and I move like lightning, Mr. Briscoe. You come out here and say, you can have a shot at this title anytime you want to, but you are lying to the people because I want it and you won't give it to me. But as I've said before, ever since you've been this high, you wanted to grow up to be a great wrestler. Well, Mr. Briscoe, I've said it before, you should have concentrated on growing up to be a man. Jack Briscoe would taunt Piper while holding his Mid-Atlantic heavyweight title. Roddy Piper, right here it is. Anytime you're man enough, anywhere, anytime, I'll tell you, you're not going to be safe anywhere about it. Wahoo McDaniel's return to Mid-Atlantic was not boding well for U.S. champion Sergeant Slaughter. Wahoo pinned Slaughter in an untitled match. Slaughter makes excuses that Wahoo had help from his friend Don Morocco, who Wahoo brought to the territory to be his tag partner and go for the NWA World Tag Titles together during the tournament. All of the fans saw it. They saw it right here. They saw Wahoo McDaniel beat you. Yeah, they saw Wahoo McDaniel and Don Morocco beat me. Wahoo McDaniel himself could not beat me. He had the help of Don Morocco. Something very interesting with the rules in Mid-Atlantic was happening as well that would play a big part between Wahoo and Slaughter. The ruling is that there will be no more disqualification in matches. In other words, there must be a winner or a loser in a match. Mid-Atlantic decided to do a 30-day test where every match had to have a winner, which meant no DQs or countouts. Slaughter got a new, great-looking US title design but he would not hold on to it for long because Wahoo McDaniel would beat him for the U.S. title in Richmond, Virginia. Wahoo, congratulations. Well, you know, it's a good call. You know, it's, the thing is, the fact that I beat Slaughter on TV and a lot of people said it was a fluke and he said it took two men to beat him and I took the belt in a match and uh, I proved it was no fluke. I proved to the people he was lying. Wahoo beat Slaughter with the no disqualification rule in effect. You know, the new rules, now there's no count out, so I knew I was in good shape. Right here you can see, I'm fighting, I'm battling. Now, right here, nice to oh, the 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 Well, you know, there's no disqualifications. Well, who's staying right on top of you? He is really trying to right just here. pound you in the submission. Same bolt twice, and the man should never do that. 
Slaughter was of course upset about losing his title. Now, Wahoo McDaniels, the new US heavyweight champion of the world, but he doesn't have a friend in the world. Wahoo McDaniels, you're finding out that there are no friends in wrestling. They're all a bunch of rats, and you're the biggest friend of all. Going around and telling everybody that you beat Sergeant Slaughter. The film shows that my shoulder was up. You're doctoring the tape. You step in the ring anytime you want, especially right here in this town. But Don Morocco was upset about Wahoo winning the US title too because he came with Wahoo to Mid-Atlantic to focus on the NWA tag team titles. You, 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 come, to me, you, you, you come to me in Hawaii and, uh, and I, I spent uh, close to $15,000 to move my family and everything to the East Coast here. I won the East, well, East Coast Regional and, uh, I, and I had congratulations on winning the United States title. I know uh, you deserve it, uh, you went to slaughter, but uh, Originally, I just thought that this that I was here for the World Tag Team Championship. Slaughter's spring turning bad would carry over to his privates, Nelson and Kernodal, as well. Terry Taylor continued his feud with the privates. Again on the ropes. He has really been balling, Taylor. Working on that win. Now he's gone to the referee. Damn the referee. Back into the corner and in the ropes. And look at Taylor. And Taylor and Kernodal now really going at it. And... Referee Sonny Fargo, he can't control the match. He's lost all control of it. No way he can control these two guys. As they're slugging away at each other, the referee says, ring the bell. That's going to be it. It's going to be a no contest. But how do you get them apart, Sandy? No way you can get these two guys separated. Jake Roberts would carry on his feud with the Privates, too, when he and Johnny Weaver got a shot at their Mid-Atlantic Tag Team titles. Jake Roberts uh, going up against uh, Prime Canudo and Nelson. And Nelson slammed right into his partner's elbow. A match where Jake Roberts would use a DDT and nobody knew what to call it. Not now, I'll tell you one thing. He's got a right on the top of the head. One, two, and he's kicked out. Kicked out of a brain buster. There may have been no DQs or countouts for a month in Mid-Atlantic, but they still had time limit draws. All right, ring the bell. Ring the bell. We don't have enough time in the program. Well, wait a minute. Suplex and Roberts has got him covered right at the bell. He had him covered right at the bell. It would be Pork Chop Cash and King Parsons who defeated the Privates for the Mid-Atlantic Tag Titles. It's a real pleasure for us at ringside right now to have our Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions, Pork Chop Cash and King Parsons. King, you two fellows have really been coming along great. That's right. You know, I've been watching Chop for a long time. The man taught me a lot about professional wrestling. You know, about three weeks ago, I was sitting at home eating breakfast and I had a disturbing phone call and with my buddy Pork Chop. He said, King, I need you down here. They're treating me bad. He said, I need somebody I can depend on to watch my back when I'm in that ring. I said, Pork Chop, I owe you a favor. Brother, I'm on my way. We are the, the middle of the champion, but we are the people champion. And brother, anytime we come to your town, I'm gonna tell you, we get down and book it. If you've never seen it together, get yourself together and come on out. Cause me and my man Parson, brother, we got so much soul, we gonna spread it all over. The first defense, the first title defense of the new champion, right here on television. We're delighted to be bringing it to you. And remember, the new NWA rules are in effect during this match. There must be a winner when it comes to the way they fight in a ring. Again with the elbow, and again, Parsons ducked right under it. Hard out of the corner comes Nelson. Good arm drag, and another one now by Parsons. Here comes Canova right into the arm drag. Very, very impressive work and tag team work by these new champs. Forkchop, Cash, and Parsons. Parsons! High into the air with a drop kick. He's got him covered. You watch this. Again, a double thrust. Parsons and Cash would hold off the ex-champions trying to get their titles back for a while. He's got a wonderful partner here. Tremendous slam. Again, he had that leg hook and again he couldn't hold it. I don't think he's going to be able to pin him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But Nelson and Kernodal would get the championships back by the end of the spring.
Jake Roberts and I were supposed to wrestle uh, Sergeant Slaughter's recruits, Private Nelson and Private Kernodle. Now, an incident happened, you know, when things are going around, animosities happen. Jake Roberts will not be here tonight. we got a film to show you why. There it is. You see him pull off and... Uh, just Valiant, it looked like just slammed Valiant right into the chair. Jake Roberts and Johnny Weaver's quest for the Mid-Atlantic Tag Titles took a turn after an incident. Ninja and Ivan Koloff were taking on Jake Roberts and Jimmy Valiant when Ninja sprayed Roberts in the face and injured his eyes. And right there's a big tackle. They both were staggered. And right there he got that spray right in the eyes. That's why Jake will not be my partner. And in a match coming up right here, you see that spray and he's in pain from that chemical. Valiant and Koloff were still feuding over the TV title, but Koloff started to try to put that off. So Valiant bought a contract Weaver had to face Koloff because he wanted Koloff, even if it was a non-title match. Yes, sir, I just bought Johnny Weaver's contract. People, we got Ivan Koloff tonight. All I need, baby, is 15, 20 seconds. 15. Wait a minute, John. Jimmy Valiant says that he's bought that contract. Man. Hi, fans, and here we are back at ringside. You see Ivan Koloff now out of the ring. Jimmy Valiant in. Steve Cyber is in. We got a little turn of Johnny event. Weaver right here. Johnny, Jimmy Valiant says he bought your contract. And I got it right here in my hand. Of course, I also got his radio right here. He got a new present. Man, some good right hands on him. He's still on him. Well, Koloff quickly rolled back to that corner for a tag. He got out of the ring as quick as he could. Valiant would defeat Koloff for the TV title in a cage match eventually in that spring. Koloff and the Ninja continued to tag together and even got a new manager together, Sir Oliver Humperdinck. This gentleman is Sir Oliver Humperdinck and I'm the greatest wrestling manager in the world today and what I'm doing here, my friend, is looking out for the interests of a couple of the finest athletes that I've had the pleasure to be associated with in many years and I'm talking about the Russian Bear Ivan Koloff, but in particular, the great mystifying Ninja. Now, Ninja's had a lot of problems around here with guys like Jimmy Valiant, Jay Strongbow, Wahoo McDaniels, and the list goes on and on and on. Jack Briscoe, but I'm here, my friend, to make sure that he gets the break he deserves. Jake Roberts returned and only had revenge on Ninja on his mind. Well, I'm not going to come out here and do a whole lot of hollering and screaming because that's not the way I feel inside right now. But I'll tell you something. I didn't come back to wrestle for Noodle, Nelson, and Monk. Something that happened to me, man. You know, every, every man in his life is going to have a turning point. He's going to have some spot that something happens to change him on the inside. Well, I guess it's happened to me, brother, because I tell you, I've went cold on the inside. And I know there's only one way to serve up revenge. You know, everybody's a fine cook. Mama can make grits and Mama can make biscuits and gravy. But the only way you can serve up revenge is to serve it cold. I tell you something, Ninja, you hurt me, you hurt me bad. You made me feel even worse inside because now I know what kind of man I really am. Down here. I am the snake, and when I bite, brother, it's going to be nasty. The Mid Atlantic Territory's testing of their must be a winner rules were winding down, but some wrestlers would take advantage of it before it ended. On a night where Wahoo McDaniel faced Flair for the NWA world title, the same night he had to defend the U.S. title. Don Morocco would attack his supposed partner, Wahoo, and send him to the hospital. Because Wahoo could not face Slaughter, there had to be a winner, and he was stripped of the U.S. Championship, and the title went back to Sergeant Slaughter. While I was in the hospital, the NWA official came to my house, took the belt, you know, and it's like I told Jack, it was really kind of funny. Four days I laid in the hospital, I didn't even know I wasn't there. U.S. heavyweight champion. Magnificent Morocco! Magnificent Morocco! The Prince of Darkness has returned. It's magnificent. And if you ever call me Don Morocco again, I will not be responsible for what's happened. I've heard Magnificent Morocco. I also heard that you've been helping the likes of Roddy Piper and Sergeant Slaughter. I Slaughter's. came out here last week and I told you. I told you how the Indian had double-crossed me. I told you how I wasn't going to stand around, how I was losing money from the World Tag Team Champion. Shut up, you! So what happens then? So long. So Wahoo's laid up in the hospital now, right now. Right here, the new U.S. champion. You know, are. Wahoo McDaniel's thought of all these kind of matches. He had Indian strap matches. He had uh, Lumberjack Canadian matches. He had all kinds of matches. And when it came down to my type of match, a boot camp match, he didn't show up. 
He didn't show up, Bob Kettle. Wahoo. So I get the belt, that's why. Wait, wait, Wahoo was injured. Wahoo was injured. He's been in what the hospital. What are you hospital. talking about? He was injured. That's right. He, in another match, he was injured. His knee was injured. He's been in the hospital. Well, he couldn't show bad. up. Jack Briscoe was still taunting Piper with his Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Championship. I own the Mid-Atlantic Championship, and that's what Roddy Popper's hollering and crying all over the place for. Well, I got it right here, Piper. And whatever you did to Jerry, I'm willing to put it up with to you anytime, anywhere, Piper. It don't make any difference to me because Piper comes out here saying, I've got the counter for the figure four leg lock. Well, I know what the counter is, and that's jumping off the top rope right on somebody when they got the figure four. Well, Piper, when I get that figure four leg lock on you, you're not gonna be able to jump off the top rope on anybody. Piper had bought off Don Morocco under the guise of Dr. X to help him down with his feuds in Georgia. And it was the same in Mid-Atlantic. Jack Briscoe. You're not fooling anybody anymore. Everybody knows the color that you are. Everybody knows what you did to me. And everybody knows you're the reason why the Chief's not the U.S. champion anymore. If you had any guts at all, you'd get in the ring and wrestle me right now. Listen, Briscoe, I know you're one of the greatest NWA world champions ever, the last one to put his belt against on the line against the Magnus of Morocco, but you've had your day. Roddy Piper, how am I talking? Roddy Piper, why am I, why am I, why am I talking to this man? Roddy Piper has signed me for the, will you excuse me? Will you excuse me? I'm having an interview out here. Roddy Piper has signed me as the first professional wrestler to sign a six-figure contract for X amount of days. Roddy Piper has money to back up. He didn't come to me with a handshake. He didn't care about you. Friendship. He didn't come to me with promises like like, like you and the other Indians. He didn't come to me with nothing. I know what you are. You're nothing but a beast, Bob. Keep your finger off. I'll tell you what. Jack Briscoe would goad Morocco into a match. He and Morocco already have teamed up to hurt Briscoe's knee. Just as nonchalant as anything, in walks Roddy Piper. Up into the corner. No way, Roddy Piper. I don't believe anybody has got a counter to that figure four. Morocco now, back to the leg and the knee. He's going to work right on it. He's got Briscoe in pain now. Morocco, it looks like, is going to go for the figure four. So the knee already, and the pressure on that knee. Here's Briscoe. Looks like he's trying to turn Morocco. He does. Briscoe turns it. Here goes Ronnie Piper. Quickly into the ring. Piper trying to get up on that rope. Again, off of that rope from behind now onto Briscoe. Shoving the referee away. Piper now stomping at Briscoe. Briscoe with a counter turning Morocco. Roddy Piper now with a metal chair. Then charging after Briscoe who ducked it. And Piper hits the ring post instead. Take it close, double team and attack Briscoe. Jack Briscoe, who has first chance against the both of them. Here comes Paul Jones and Jimmy Valiant. Quickly now, Piper. Jack, I tell you, I'm glad to see you getting around on that leg. Well, Jack. thank you, Bob. I tell you, Morocco, turncoat Morocco, money greedy Morocco, coward rat Roddy Piper. They've tried everything they could do try to get this bell for me. They're unable to do it. The reason I'm wearing this brace today is because the Roddy Piper bought off Don Morocco. You can't run, the belt's here. I want you, when are you gonna come and get this belt? Roddy Piper, Call me Rick. magnificent. I put Rich in the ditch. Where's Wahoo McDaniels? Wahoo McDaniels is gone. He's gonna be back. Mag here. Jack Briscoe, what happened to Jack Briscoe? You wanna see a combination? You wanna see here? Two. Two. You, two, you, two is better than you one. <laughs> something ails you, you go to the doctor. Mr. Piper has a lot of money. <laughs> Aside from a six-figure contract, I got little bonuses. Five grand in Atlanta for some fat slob. It doesn't matter. <laughs> We're having a good it time. It doesn't matter, though. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the magnificent one, the Prince of Darkness, and Roddy Piper, the man who has set the East Coast on fire.
We got it down. Ask Briscoe. Ask Briscoe, where was the Indian? Where was Wahoo? Ask me. Ask me. Where was Wahoo? Where was he? was in the hospital. Right where Briscoe should be. It's a pleasure to be here. Jack Briscoe would defeat Roddy Piper at house shows, defending the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight title. At the end of the spring, Jay Youngblood returned to Mid-Atlantic. Jay Youngblood after the tag now. Tomorrow will go out and here's Brian Nelson. Come on, get the four. Now that's right to the back of the neck. Cuts him down to the top. Cuts down. Tomorrow will go back to the month. A Tommy Hawk shot. Youngblood had a warning for all of the hills in the territory. I'll tell you what, I've been in the Far East on the Japanese tour, and I still say the Mid Atlantic and the worldwide wrestling area has the toughest competition in the darn world. And I mean Amen. it sincerely. Amen. There was an example right there the monk. Private Canoodle and Private Nelson. But now it's getting down to the dirty nitty gritty. Sergeant Slaughter, the beach bum, Don Morocco, and you, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Well, brother, now you realize that you're surrounded by nothing but Indians. You got myself, Jay Youngblood. You got the great Jack Bristol and the great Chief Wahoo McDaniels. Brother, now let's see you fight! Just like you put the Chief out, he's back, back on his feet. He's here to stay. Morocco, Slaughter, Piper, I want you guys to remember that. I'm behind him, the folks are behind him, and you guys remember that.